Hey there everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris Ormy and today we are playing more Francis Hockey Manager 6 with the Montreal Canadiens. We are doing quite well. I won't I won't lie, we're doing quite well. We didn't have an amazing season um when we simulated that first year. But since then things have been slowly progressing. You can see you know, since say twenty seventeen, hundred and three points. That was a good season for the Canadians. And then down to 71. 96 is a good bounce back, but then down to 80. And we bring it back up to a 97. That's pretty good. Then that 140, that, you know, huge, huge season. That's fantastic. This season is a 119. We've lost 11 more games. We've, well, we've lost 10 more games and one more in overtime, basically, than last season. Um... Yeah, we did trade away Gibson, I believe, to the Avalanche. And we went with um, Caleb Primo, who I believe is Keith Primo's son, if I'm remembering correctly. It's been a while since I've loaded up this save, to be honest with you, and, and really taking a look at it. So uh, I'm going off the top of my head. I can't remember who else we lost. Oh, we lost Nick Suzuki. He wouldn't sign the contract. We went after Nolan Patrick, didn't we? Okay, so there's been a few changes, a few little bits here and there where things change. We got a, a deeper squad, probably. Yeah, we we went for a deeper squad, so not a bad season. Not up to where we were last year, maybe. And oh my God, Caleb Primo, Caden, sorry, not Caleb. Oh uh, yeah, Keith Primo's son, and he is really solid. Honestly, I didn't think he'd rise this high. I really didn't think he'd rise this high. Okay, that's... Um, still didn't play that well. I mean, that's kind of the issue. As good as he was, he didn't simulate that well. Uh, Giordano holds a three-star rating. Played quite decently on the back end. Lindholm, you know... Ampers has been absolutely fantastic. That's a four-star player, keeping his rating, keeping playing well. Broberg, I think, loses potential. Uh, Lindgren, decent, but not great on the back end as well. Struble didn't really play much, I don't think. He played... No, he did. Okay, so Struble actually played the entire year and did not simulate well at all. So that's something else... We might need to look at that. Didn't seem to be a good fit right there. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. Well, Rashmus Darling did okay. Probably want someone much, much better performing as a five star player than okay. And Noah Dobson, the only offensive option we had in the back end because Dougie Hamilton left. That's right. Oh. Okay, so defensively, we're worse than last season. We did bring in Giordano to do some bits, bits for us. 39. Like, what a story. Undrafted. You know, he never really... He never really played well at the same age as other people. It always took him a year or two to catch up. But um, when he did, he was able to be an absolutely fantastic player. And, you know, he's kind of kept to a high level since... I'd say when he turned 34, maybe 35, but the best years of his career certainly have been the last four or five years. And you can see here the points total just jumps up there in 2018, 19. And back down and up and down, but 49 is a pretty good place for us. Like that's his, what, 36, 37 year old seasons? That's when. That's what he returned to with us. Um, so very good to see that while it took him a while to get there, he's still able to sustain that level of play. So I'm pretty happy with that. On offense, I mean, defensive players, Elias Lindholm and uh, Alexander Barkov, and that's about it. Offensive by the guys, typically okay, but again, that's not really what we brought him in for an okay play. Uh, Clayton Keller did very nicely. Um, 
Yeah, all of a sudden, and the bring cat. So, so Dennis Enko and Armquist, very disappointing youngsters on the left wing. Nicholas Backstrom did absolutely nothing for us. He was the other veteran we brought in with Giordano. Jordan Starr, someone we brought in for depth and another sort of veteran presence. Absolutely terrible. Uh, Clark didn't step up. Young guy Caulfield, another young guy, didn't step up. Tippett was very, very meh. Yeah, without someone like Johnny Goudreau on this team, we'd be in trouble. <laughs> I'll say that. Like, Goudreau is everything going forward. So, Barkov, great two-way player, build around him. Offensively, Johnny Goudreau steps up. Defensively, it's Lindholm and Giordano holding us down. And Caden Primo is a solid goaltender, but a definite regression from John Gibson. So, that's how we kind of played. Everyone's got a deal. Everyone's got a contract. We can go with the same team if we want to next year. We're 57 wins this year. I mean, that's not bad. Honestly, that's just, that's really not bad. Nope. And who we got in the system? As uh, so we got our two goalkeepers, Skotnikov and Bednar. So Bednar could be the backup. Uh, Skotnikov is more of a trade bait at this point. We might be moving him on. And then to me, stop. Kotiuk and Clevin especially. Now, I think o o Kotiuk used to be a four and a half or a five star potential player. I think. So that's some mad regression there. Uh, but we, we could easily bring him in. Taylor Clevin as well. Very, very good prospect long term. Those two will definitely be called up. To me, still probably get called up. Um, we could get rid of players like Giordano, Lindgren, and maybe move on from Struble or someone at the same time. Like Those could be our three replacements right there. I wouldn't mind that so much. Betna comes in, and I think we got Skinner as backup right now. No, Swayman, sorry. I knew it began with an S. Did we get rid of Skinner? I think we might have. Uh, but we can get rid of trade away Swayman or maybe... Yeah, no, I'm not rolling with Swayman as a starter. So trade away Swayman. Now Primo is number one for another year with Bednar as his backup. Or maybe trade away Primo and Swayman. Bednar as backup. And let's go find a new starting goalie. Let's get a veteran in for one or two years and wait for Askarov to take over. So that could be another option there but i think on the back end we're really really good right now and then joachim camel again solid but i don't think he's really going to make much of an improvement sadly i really don't think he is and we're very young on that side we're waiting for for clark and caulfield to really step up and right now if lindholm i want to, I, I really want to go in and edit lindholm I want to take away his ability to play right wing because I need him to play center. We need him to play center. Him and Bach over our one-two punch. 100%. Benier coming through needs to be that third line center. 100%. Because right now this just, this ain't working. This ain't working. We got, we got Nolan Patrick. We got Owen Tippett. Neither one are playing that badly but neither one are playing that well could easily move both of those on keller on the first wing clark moves up to second wing and if caulfield does okay he can move up to third camel can come in on the fourth there's ways of doing that there are ways of doing that um everybody's re-signed and then in our draft pool right now the unsigned draftees, who we can bring in. And yeah, Askarov is ready for some minutes. Uh, more Lishnik, probably not. Koskin and Selin, definitely not. Slavkovsky, probably not. But Divine, yeah. So we, we've definitely got players to bring up. 16 offense, 16 physical. Jack Divine, he could definitely be something for us there. And Porno as well. Porno could be another option as well they both play right wing so we'll see with that 
we will see with that. Um, I think there was nobody really here that I wanted. Yeah. Nobody really anywhere that you want to pick up in free agency right now. So we're going to head into the playoffs. I think that's the um, that's the main thing. But, I mean, right now, it's an interesting mix of teams. We're right up there with Boston. Toronto have fallen off a little bit, but Buffalo aren't too far behind. So there's four teams over 90 points there looking really good. And then Tampa, Ottawa, you know, they're lurking and they've got some decent pieces, to be honest with you. Uh, in real life, Ottawa's just had the, the draft lottery when I'm recording this. This is a little bit ahead. Um, but yeah, at the moment, I think they've got number three and number five, which is quite scary in a draft this deep. That could be Byfield and Cole Perfetti. Or Drysdale. Or something of that nature. And they've already got a couple of nice pieces like Chabot and, you know, they add these pieces in and they continue to build. They'll be a very, very good young team rebuilding through the draft. So keep an eye on Ottawa. Their time will come once more. Right now, they're, they're having a bad time. But they're learning. They're not trading away their draft picks. They're trading for other people's draft picks. So... Keep an eye on them. And in game, you're starting to see that come to fruition. Uh, we'll see how they develop. Pittsburgh, Carolina, aging teams, they're just not going away. They're just not going away. 106 and 100 points. The Rangers and Islanders separated by two points. Good to see both of them running quite well. Uh, and then, you know, Philly, not far behind. Columbus, a little bit further back. And then the Caps, they're paying. They're paying right now. They had Ovi for all those years. They didn't take advantage until the very end. You know, Ovi, Backstrom, etc. Like they, they had great goalies. They had some good defenders. You know, they had a, a very good center that worked perfectly with Ovi, getting all those goals. But yeah, when they've all aged up and moved on, the caps are falling down. So not very good for them. And the Devils. Devils and Panthers are absolutely atrocious. Red Wings, not the worst team in the league anymore. It's still quite close, but it, they're not. Um, and then the Pacific Division went weird on me. Went weird on me. The last place team gets 79 points. Like, that's the that's Vegas. And then the Emeralds got 83, which ain't too bad. Sharks in 6 of 91. The Kings in fifth have 96 points. Like, that's enough to win third place in that division. That's enough to win fourth place in our division. It's enough to take second in the central, but we'll get to that. Uh, Anaheim, 98. And then a three-way tie on 99. The Canucks, the Flames, and the Oilers. The Western Conference Pacific Division is Canadian. 100% Canadian. All the American teams are struggling. A little bit. The three Canadians are up on top. And 13 overtime losses for the Canucks. They just did not want to be beat. Unbelievable. Uh, and then the Central. I mean, the powerhouse is the Avalanche. And I hope this happens in real life. I really do. Um, but yeah, it probably won't. But again, I mean, Arizona, the worst team in the league. Just trash. The Wild Stars, Predators, Blackhawks all need some work. The Blues are on 84 points, and the Jets are on 87. Like, that's bubbles for everybody else. That's like wildcard bubble playoff places. Absolutely mental. And if we look at the wildcard, Boston, Montreal, and Buffalo, Carolina, Pittsburgh, New York, taking through Toronto and New York. Everyone above 90 points going through. I'm down for that. I'm down for that. Lurking just blow lightning flyers, sends. Like I say, those times will come again for those teams. Uh, Edmonton, Calgary, and Vancouver, the 399s, of course. And then Colorado, Winnipeg, and St. Louis Blues. That means the Ducks and Kings come through. But it does mean 91-point Sharks lose out to the 87 and 84-point 
Jets and Blues. So, yeah, that used to be a very competitive division in the Central. But now that Colorado built young team and are sustaining their success while other teams are in decline, it's paying off big time for them. That is paying off big time. If you look overall in the league, again, we're right up near the top. We're playing really well and doing really well. Um, but yeah, that's in Boston, tied for that second spot, and Colorado just dominating right now. That's, you know, kind of what they do over the last few seasons. They are the current champions. Like, double-digit overtime losses for Predators. That stopped them getting wins, not losses. Um, but both the Sabres and the Canucks got their wins and stopped some good losses. That boosted them right up. I'm very happy with where we are. I've got to be honest, I'm very happy with where we are. Okay, and then looking here, we're going to start with game rating. 285s, of course. Sid the Kid and Connor McJesus. Crosby and McDavid right there. Um, unbelievable. 85s. Thomas Chabot at Ottawa, 80. He will be the piece they build around on the back end. And in real life, I think the pieces they build around on offense are going to be got in this draft uh, in real life. So we'll see. We'll see how they do with that. But I think that's kind of a very, very good plan they have in place there. Uh, Roman Yossi, very good from him. Patterson, exceptional young player coming through, doing really well in real life. But in game, he's also very, very impressive. Uh, Shane Gosper, very, very decent. Keith Yandel, still getting the job done, is Keith. 36 years of age, but playing really, really well. Um, and that reminds me a bit of Giordano, Giordano as well. And then Jack Eichel on 77 with Nate McKinnon. So, very decent. We jump in not too far behind Barkov on 76 and Johnny Goudreau on a 74. So we got two players in the top 17. That's our offensive identity is those two players. Sadly, that's our, uh, that's our identity. We need to get better than that. We need depth. We need players that are going to step up. And we do have him in certain places. But, yeah, I think we lack some depth that we really really need to look at shots Nick McKinnon 401 unbelievable Holtz very good young player and he has uh racked up some good shots already he's on back-to-back -back good seasons a little bit of a drop-off maybe but he's getting his goals up there Panarin Taylor Hall Kale McCarr round up the top five over 300 though for quite a few people We've got Johnny Goodrun on 329, Barkov on 304. That's where our shots come in. The Brinkat we brought in is, you know, 294. That's not bad. That's not bad. Game winners. Kane and McKinnon, 11 apiece. Shorty points for Bryn to Chuck. Uh, Dylan Cousins with four short-handed goals. Power play points for Patterson with Hall and McDavid just in behind. And power play goals go to Taylor Hall quite a lot there. Most penalty minutes, Felino. <laughs> Felino. Our former player did really, really well. Um, but yeah, he does like a bit of a scrap. Plus minus is Colorado. They are exceptional at it. But Giordano, he is the first non-Colorado man on that table with McDavid alongside him. Dobson's there. Keller's there, Barkov's there. We're slowly starting to step in. But okay, goals. Nick McKinnon, 54. Patrick Laine, 48. Finally getting going in Winnipeg. Uh, Hall, Holtz, Eichel, Kane. Very decent seasons there as well. Uh, Duclair, Panarin, Bessa, Landy, Pettersson, McDavid. All 40 goal scorers. It's a shame, really, for Barkov. Didn't quite get up there. The Brinkat's on 37. If we keep scrolling down here, though, you will see that we got a 39 and a 37. And that's decent. We start falling off. We don't really get back into the top sort of players who have 30 goals or more. 
in a year, which is annoying. But then we do get Keller and Lindholm on 27 apiece. Johnny Goudreau's 26. Tippett's 26. So we might be light on 30 goal scorers. But 25s and above, we're stacked. So it's not too far away. Um, which is something I look for is 30 goals. Assists, I mean, 50 or more is normally quite good. You can see all these players who have achieved that. That is fantastic. Uh, Noah Dobson in that mix. And we get 60 go, uh, sixty assists, which is normally, you know, elite. Johnny Goudreau sits there at number five, happy with that. Patterson again. Mitch Marner shows up. Very good sort of assist from Marner. McKinnon, 69, phenomenal. 85 for McDavid. 85. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Well, it's not unbelievable. It's believable, but it's outstanding. And yeah, and then points like eight year above, Barkov just outside the top 20, the Brinker just outside the top 20. Close. If they had played all the games, they probably would have got it, but so many missed games, you can't really think that way. Uh, but I'm happy to have those two sitting close to the top 20 and, you know, around that 80 marker. That's pretty decent. Uh, but then Monaghan, Kane, Tyler Sagan, very good seasons there. Line 84, Rantanen and Kako, 85s, the fantastic Finns on the right wings. 87 for Johnny Goudreau. That will be our top marker, which is pretty good for 76 games. That's pretty good. Um, but yeah, it's not where I'd want him in the top 10. It's not where he was last year with 138 points. But we were really stacked last season. And uh, this season, we went a different direction. A little bit of a retool rather than a rebuild. Paddy Kane, 88. Matthews, Kucherov, Landeskog, 89. Uh, Pasternak and Bersa at 95. Panarin and Mana, 96. Taylor Hall, though, 97 inside the top five. And then four centers. Buffalo's Jack Eichel with 102. Vancouver's Lars Pettersson. 103. Nick McKinnon, the Colorado captain, or should be captain in my opinion, 123. Defending champions. And then McDavid. Edmonton's only hope, Connor McDavid, 125. If they can't win a Stanley Cup with McDavid, I'd be very surprised, especially with some of the pieces growing around him now, like Dry Zeitel. So it's not all on McDavid. But when you have the best player in hockey, you need to make it count. You do need to make it count. Like Pittsburgh, they got that job done. They had Mario Lemieux. You know, they've had Sidney Crosby. They've had some great players there over the years. Um, you know, Ma Malkin, etc. They made it count. Eventually, they made it count. They got some Stanley Cups. Great. Washington. I think it took like 13 years or longer after being drafted for Ovi to get his hands on the cup. In this simulation, they got it twice uh, before letting him go. But they got that done. Him and Backstrom and, you know, everybody there. Everybody there. But, you know, Ovi was too good not to win. McDavid is very young. He's got a lot of time. But Edmonton don't scare me as a cup threat right now in real life. They're an outstanding team in places. But I think their their management's holding them back a little bit. And that's a shame. For a player like McDavid to not win a Stanley Cup is unthinkable. But he hasn't done yet. He hasn't done yet. And I would say as well, McKinnon's not far off being the best player in the league. And that is, um, you know, my hope that they end up winning. My hope is they end up winning one in Colorado for obvious reasons. For obvious reasons. Uh, goal against average. I mean, David Rittich just had an outstanding season in Boston. He's part of the reason. They got the offensive juggernaut going. But part of the reason they tied our points total and maybe did slightly better than us in a couple of places was a shutdown goalie. 940 saves, 185 goals against. John Gibson had a very good season in Colorado as well. Murray in Pittsburgh... Very nice indeed as well. 
Um, Primo, 253, isn't too bad. That's a percentage of 905, though. That's kind of the... That's kind of the problem, you know? Even Gibson didn't play that well. Save percentage. Hell of a buck. Yeah, I'd say these are some of the best goalies in the league. You know, these two, Bishop, Murray, Kakinen, Kerry Price. Like, there's a lot of good goalies in this range. You've got some young goalies as well, Di Pietro and Scott. Bobrovsky does okay, decent season, but goals against is a touch high there. Uh, Philip Grubauer is in Ottawa in this game. Seems to be a very solid all-round goalie. When they get more help on the back end, that goals against will drop down. His save percentage is already doing bits. Fleury, I mean, the flow man doesn't ever let up. He is still playing really well right now at 38 in this game. And in fact, he has a much better season than he had last year. He played 25 more games and had much better stats. Outstanding. Uh, you see Sarin, Sheskrin, and of course, David Rittich. Shutouts, Di Pietro, and um, Rittich. So yeah, interesting to see him up at Vancouver, really playing some solid hockey between the sticks. I think that's pretty good. Wins, though, it's more about team with win stats, and 45 for Rittich. Primo got 48. So maybe he's not up there with those kind of goalies. Also, another one of our backups, we had Garrett Sparks. We traded him to Anaheim in the deal to bring Gibson in. And like he's there on 40 wins. So we brought, you know, we sent him over there so we could get Gibson. And then we sent out Sparks, you know, to get Gibson, but then sent Gibson up to star Primo. And all three of those, all three of those, are in the top four win, winning goalies right now. Like, that's mind-blowing. To me, that's mind-blowing. Um, goals per game, 4.01. We are the deadliest team in hockey. Uh, but we do spread it around a lot, and there's not a lot of production from big, big players sometimes. Colorado, Edmonton, you'd expect that. Again, Nick McKinnon, Connor McDavid. You really would expect that. Carolina, aging, but still doing good. And then it's the Maple Leafs in fifth place. Goals against per game. Some really bad defenses there. But we make the top five in defense. Boston, Rittich, shut down. No more needs to be said. Colorado, a, almost a perfect team right now. Now, great defense, great offense. 238 is very, very decent. Here's where Pittsburgh come in. They don't score that many goals. But they really don't concede goals. They are a big, big shutdown team. And Buffalo, you know, they got Jack Eichel up front to do bits for them. They've got the back end locked down, 255. We're on 265, just ahead of Calgary. Shots, it's us in Colorado. Edmonton in third. And shots against, the least shots against, it's Colorado, then us. Edmonton almost makes the top three again, but it's Pittsburgh this time. Face-off percentages, we're top three in the league. Nashville, LA, and then us uh, with the Maple Leafs. Shots blocked, we're still really, really poor at that. Uh, we don't face that many shots. We don't block that many shots, maybe. We're more on our feet defending kind of players. Colorado, Edmonton, a lot of good teams don't block shots. Uh, a lot of teams with good goalies don't block shots either. Hits, we don't throw the body. That's something I think we need to do a little bit more. And I, I did sign players to do that. They just didn't do that. Like, I figured a veteran like Stahl and Backstrom and, you know, those kind of players maybe would do it for us. I thought some big, tough defensemen like Lindholm, Giordano, Lindgren, Broberg, even Rasmus Stalin would throw the body around a little bit. But they're more sort of... Uh, Stay on your feet and um, get in between the puck and the net kind of guys. Takeaways, we're really poor. Really poor at taking away the puck. That's something, again, that needs to change. We tend to let the opposition just play their hockey. We play our hockey. And at the end of the day, our offense will be better than yours. That's kind of where we're at. That's kind of where we're at. We trust our goalie to do enough, the defense to do enough. 
but we're going to let you cycle that puck and shoot that puck as much as you like because when we get our chance we're going to score that does seem to be the makeup of this team looking at these analytics here uh, and giveaways not that many for an offensive based team in that way we're actually pretty solid what scares me is how low Colorado are eighth in the league on giveaways that scares me they're great on offense they're great on defense and they don't give up the puck now they don't do many hits and block shots either that's you know similar to us in that but they don't give away the puck and let you counter them injuries i mean we've been hit pretty bad this season top six um yeah I can't lie, it's been a bit of a struggle seeing some players go down. Anaheim, Winnipeg, you know, uh, Boston, all over 400 days. Over 450 for New York and almost 500 for Tampa Bay, who still looked like a good team and played quite well. So you can't forget that Tampa had a really bad time. On the flip side, Florida, 61 days. They, they missed a combined two months. Vegas missed 76 days and were absolutely god awful as well. Let's, you know, let's put that out there. Two of the worst teams in the league did not play well and have no injury excuses for it. It's not a, you know, there's no reason for it. I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But again, Colorado mid table there, they're very, very scary. And Toronto are there with them. So, I don't know. I don't know. It's um, it's interesting. It's very, very interesting. But yeah, Tampa Bay so close with all those injuries, 500 days of combined injuries, and just miss out to the wild card. They just miss out on the wild card. A goalie that will be getting there. Now, they lose Victor Hedman, but they've got some decent pieces on defense right now they do need to retool their defense and on offense i mean left wing's atrocious that's that's fine um well it's not fine but it, it will be they lose stamp because they've still got braden point and they got kucherov for another few years if they can get that defense sorted allow the goalie to grow excuse me allow the goalie to grow a little bit get Anfeld some good players to protect him you might be seeing the Lightning becoming a factor again. Uh, which is good because otherwise you think they would have to trade away someone like Kucherov and or Braden Point. And that's not what you want to see. They're tied in now to pretty decent deals. Probably keeping them at the club for the rest of their career. 34, 35 by the time those are done. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd expect them to stay and build around those two draft a good left winger, draft some defensemen or trade for some defensemen and really start making a move back into the playoff picture. So let me know what you think about that. Uh, before ourselves, like I say, I think we're pretty decent right now. We're pretty decent right now. I'm a bit disappointed in Broberg, but that's limited action. right? Yeah, yeah. He's had 33 games over the last two years. That's not really on him. It's not really on him. But some of these young guys who are, you know, ability-wise, if you look here, these guys need to contribute. 100% they need to contribute. Three and a half or above. And we're looking here and, okay, 62, 63 for Keller and Olofsson. But they're producing on offense, if not on defense. So it's okay. It's okay. And then you've got some good players here doing their business. They're getting paid money. They're getting the job done. Backstrom, six million. Good player, not producing. Struble, young player, not producing. Getting a little bit of Patrick and Tippett need to sort of either trade them away or find a better way to make them work because they're not really impressing us yet. Uh, Giordano, we're going to keep for another year hopefully uh, unless we need to bring up those youngsters and really retool that back end 
But we brought Struble in to do that last season. It hasn't done anything. Him, Backstrom, Stahl, Clark, Denisenko, very disappointing. Uh, Lindgren did okay defensively. He's he's done okay. He could be someone we move out, but he's on a cheap contract. I don't know. And then these guys are just for the future. Our backups. So I'm not expecting too much out of them. But yeah, Backstrom, Stahl, I don't think worked. Those are the two veterans that did not work. And then on the flip side, Giordano did. But not only did our veterans up front not work for, not work out very well, but Patrick and Tippett were very, very meh. Clark, Denisenko just didn't get the job done. And on the back end, Struble didn't get the job done. So we need to look into those things. We 100% need to look into those things and figure out a better team moving forward. Because right now, I don't know. I don't know. We got new deals for people, but coming up next year, a lot of these young guys, do I re-sign them or not? Like, Caulfield's done nothing. He's probably not going to want a big deal, but he's done nothing. Broberg, he's been okay, but he's done nothing. He's probably going to want a decent deal. And then you start moving on to Lindgren, and okay, he's kind of playing okay. Struble and Clark, they're going to want decent deals, really decent deals. And they're not offering anything but potential and not that much potential. So are these the players that we should be trading away? Are they new? Are they settling? Do they just need to find their role? Have your say. Let me know what you think about that. Uh, but I'm a bit worried there. And then players like Owen Tippett's going to want money. Don't really think he's done anything to get a big pay rise. Olofsson's been good. I'll give Olofsson his due. Over the last two seasons, he's been okay. Bit of a down year this year, but, you know, we will have to pay him at the end of next season. We'd have to pay Primo and see if we want to trade him while his value's high. Because right now, I don't know. So I thought he was a three-and-a-half to four-star goalie. He seems to be like a four-and-a-half star goalie right now. And I don't believe he truly is. I don't think he's got the stats for it. So maybe that's a trade that we should make to make the most advantage out of that. But I don't know who we bring in to replace him. I've got to be honest with you. I don't know who we bring in to replace him. And then Lindholm. Lindholm deserves a new deal. I just need him to play center. Um, but that's it for that year. That's it for that year. But it's coming. A lot of big decisions are coming. A lot of big decisions are coming. We've really overhauled this team. And I really, really do like some parts that we've got playing right now. Especially that first line. Clayton Keller, for me, should be first line. With Johnny Goudreau and Alexander Barkov. I think that is fantastic. And then I think you pair up the Brinkat with someone on the right-hand side. A Tippett, a Patrick, somebody with Lindholm centering that line. And then I think you've got a really good top six to work with. So, it's about finding that right balance. And in defense, we brought in Hampus Lindholm. He's done a very good job. Uh, Noah Dobson starting to play a little bit better, offering some offense. I think they'll be a good pairing together. Rasmus Darling and Lindgren seem to be very, very similar. And... Sadly, Struble and Broberg are fairly similar in that they're slightly disappointing. So we need to keep Giordano around. But I think we've done a good job overhauling little bits here and there. Um, the Brink act over to the right-hand side. Goudreau, Barkov, Keller. Olofsson, Lindholm. The brink at. That's a very nice top six. That's a very, very nice top six. Puts all of them back on the second line where he did business. Keeps the brink at on the second. Keeps Lindholm on the second as center. 
pushes Keller back up where he can be more of a force offensively and only offensively. Alongside two defensively responsible forwards. Olofsson normally is a defensive responsible forward, so him and Lindholm on that second line can cover for De Brinkat, who's more the offensive outlet. Yeah, I'd quite like that. I'd actually quite like that mix. So, pretty decent. Pretty decent. One last thing to look at then. Uh, well, two, two really last things to look at. Upcoming free agents. Let's start with the stars. So, Tarasenko's 31. You've got Dylan Larkin. You've got Jack Hughes. who's only a four-star player, by the way. I'm not sure I truly believe that, but apparently he's a four-star player. Uh, Quinn and Byfield, Jake DeBrusque. Ben Bishop, a bit old for me, him. Uh, Born Byram, Nakom, York, Raymond, Hofer, Cousins. There's so many. There's so many good players here that we could pick up, and there's good two-way players. Dylan Cousins, Cam York, Jacob, no, Jackson, Lacombe, um, two-way player there. The Brusque isn't far off being a two-way. Then you got Byfield, Hughes, Larkin through the center and Tarasenko as well. They're all two-way players. You want just offensive-minded superstars. DeBrusque, Larkin, Johnson, Niederreiter does seem to be the guys there. Defensively, this is where you get your money in. This is where you get your money in. And again, I'm really, I'm looking at Vince Dunn. I'm looking at someone like Vince Dunn instead of a Broberg or instead of a Lindgren. Maybe instead of a Giordano. As good as Giordano was, if I can get done in here on a cheap deal at 26 and he continues to play that kind of defense, I'll be very, very happy. I don't know if I can get Cam York in. I think that would be way too much. But if I could, that's very similar. Lacombe, very similar. Samuelson, very, very similar. But he's going to take time to get ready. Um, Gustafsson as well, he could come in. There's all these different kinds of players. Born Byram, of course, I would love to bring in. Um, but I, I really don't see some of these players getting released. Like York, Lasko, Byram, they should all be re-signed, 100%. They should. Yeah, 100% they should. But done is an option. And then long-term, you see here, so many players. Harley, Sider. Portillo, uh, Rodriguez is in there, Dostal, Kuchtov, Elis, Addison. But also you're seeing that players like Dunn and Larkin are on the trade block. They're on the trade block. And while Dylan Larkin would be cool, and he is a two-way player, we don't really need him because we did bring in some good players. Tarasenko could be good, but... We don't really need him, but he's on the trade block. And then Vince Dunn was on the trade block as well, unless I imagined that. But I think he was on the trade block. Yeah, he's on the trade block as well. There's pieces. There's pieces to be able to pick up here, and that's very, very interesting to me. You look at the trade block, and then you got players over here. You want a bit of veteran presence. you got some. Um, you've got Keith Yandel playing really well at 36. Him and Giordano together. That would be hilarious. The oldest defensive pairing in the league, but that could be good. But again, Vince Dunn on the back end is probably the best mix of age and ability while being you know, being low enough to be cheap, I think. Um, then you've got a couple of younger, you know, younger guys that might do a job like Larkin, but again, we don't need him. And Phillips, I'd rather have done. Um, I don't know, but I, th I think I'm definitely centered in on done, as you probably can tell. I don't see too much offense there, apart from maybe a Larkin. And overall, they are three and four on the list. Now, long term, I think Goldie is solved. But short term, if we are going to trade Primo, use you know what we get what we can for him while he's at his peak. I think we'd be pretty decent if we could bring in someone like a Ben Bishop. Now, I don't think he's going to be crazy expensive 
I don't think he's going to be that good. But really, I mean, his skating and his low shots are probably the only thing less than what Caden Primo has got. I keep calling him Caleb. It's Caden Primo. But those are the only things probably less than him. So he's old, but he can get like one or two years in net for us before having to move on. That might give Askarov a chance. So let me know there as well. The only real offensive player I'm looking at is Larkin. The only real defensive player I'm going to be looking at would be Vince Dunn. Um, I think we need Vince more than we need Dylan, to be honest with you. And then Ben Bishop could be the new goalie. Let me know your feelings on that trio. But like I say, there are some very good young players I would be willing to give up picks for. Byfield. York. Maybe Lacombe. But Byfield and York. 100%. 100%. I would love those players. Um, so, yeah, we do have the option there as well. Um, and then the final thing would be... Let's go up here to the homepage. And the entry draft. And I've done some looking around and... Players like Sokolov worry me slightly. But I do think number one is definitely going to be Berdad or Michkov. Um, depends how much the other teams are scouted. It, again, does seem a very centre-heavy draft. There are some good goalies, but I don't think any of these are top goalies. I've looked at some of their stats and... You know... If they've got the potential, it's going to take a long time to get there. A long time to get there. There's nothing that really makes me think that these are, you know, superstars in the making you need to trade up for. Good reflexes, but also a little bit injury prone. But he's he's one of the more intriguing ones. He's got a weird mix of abilities. Um. So, yeah, I don't know. I think they're going to take so long to come through. I'm not going to really want to attack goalie too much and Holmstrom as well. We just don't know anything about. So there are a lot of those. There are some early defensemen who look good, but after that, I think it thins out really quickly. But center's your depth. Center is your depth. There are so many center options. It's unbelievable. And I think pretty much I'm happy with most players of three-star ability or above. Uh, and there are some, if you do want a three-star player, but you want them to start really soon. You've got people like Fantili, who I think is going to be a good player. You've got Zema, again, very solid. Offense and physical are really good on all these players, which is why they are ready. Uh, Riley Haidt, Christopher Yanis um, and Michkov himself, Molnar. So there are some, there are some starting caliber players right now. And a mix of them as well. Two that will battle for the top spot. Molna should go first round. And then a bunch of three stars who are all probably second rounders. So I think the depth is really good. I do think the depth is really good. But it's mainly forwards. It is mainly forwards. And if I look at my big board, I've got a tie between Berdard and Michkov. Then I got another couple of wingers because they're so rare compared to the centers. And then it's like eight centers before I get to a defenseman, which is um, Mitchell. So where is Mitchell? I don't like Loshek. I do like Jeremy Mitchell. I do like Jeremy Mitchell. Again, though, a lot of these players are going to take so long to get ready. Uh, Erickson, where is he? He's down quite a bit. Okay. So, yeah, I don't know if I want to go early on defensemen. I really, really don't. I think we've got 13th overall pick. Yeah, we've got number 13. And then we've got the back-to-back -back picks at the end, 31-32. We've got an early one then at 38. We follow up at 43. 
and we've finished at 49. Six top 50 picks. We've done really well in trading with teams early who don't have top 10 picks, and so we'll protect them, but are just outside that range. And we're always giving up just enough. Now, it has cost us in terms of, you know, you look at our team and where we were last year, it's a huge step back we've taken. But we're still in the playoffs. And not only are we still in the playoffs, we've got the third best record in hockey if you give the tie to Boston. And the number one, of course, is your defending champion, Colorado Avalanche, who are unbelievable. Like, they get good goaltenders, and we give them a good goaltender, but they already had tendies who are playing phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. You know, they had Grubau playing well. They had Franco playing well. Now they got John Gibson. But they got Byram. They've got Gerard. They've got Kale McCarr on the back end. They're really, really solid. And then you look a little bit around and... Who they got up front? They've got everybody. They've got so much. It's unbelievable. You know, that top line is scary. Landy, Rantanen, McKinnon. Second line starting to look good. They've got depth for the first time in ages. So, yeah. With what we've given up, we should be a lot worse than we are. So, looking at the playoff trees. Pittsburgh, New York Rangers. Interesting. I'd like to say Pittsburgh, but New York starting to look good. That's going to be a nice battle. Toronto, Carolina, again, I think you've got to edge in favor of, of Toronto, but Carolina, they're a good team. They're, a, they're not a great team, but they're a good, solid team. Buffalo and ourselves, I mean, that's going to be interesting. Um, That's going to be interesting. I think you know, their defense is good. That worries me. They've got Jack Eichel for Magic, which... I'm not sure we can shut down every game. And Primo might have a tough time in places. So I think that's very close, but I've got to back us to go through, of course. And then the Islanders are a very decent team, but Rittich in that back end of Boston, the best defense in hockey. They went from having possibly the best line in hockey to having the best shutdown goalie and defense this year. So they're going to be really tough in the playoffs. Very tough in the playoffs. Um... So, yeah, I think Boston ourselves, Toronto Rangers. I think those are my four I'm going for on that side of the bracket. And then LA, very decent team building, but Colorado is your juggernaut. Winnipeg, St. Louis are very similar in some ways. One's on the descent, one's on the ascension. Uh, I think I edge it at this point to Winnipeg, but... Don't count St. Louis out. Don't count St. Louis out. Um, Edmonton should overcome Anaheim. But again, Anaheim are deceptively good in places. And Vancouver should win over Calgary. Again, Calgary have some really nice pieces. I'm not discounting them. But Elias Peterson is a juggernaut. And Vancouver are built decently enough on the back end to uh, handle some stuff. So... I think Vancouver, Edmonton, Winnipeg, and Colorado. So I'm going right to left on a 50-50 split on our side of the bracket. But then I'm going the three and one split right and left, a home and away on the western side of the bracket. So I'm expecting Colorado, Winnipeg with Colorado to go through. Edmonton, Vancouver with Edmonton to go through. We set up yet another, I think the third uh, in a row, Edmonton, Colorado, conference final again i say colorado gets to the finals i'm saying it's boston and us we tied on points we get to meet in the divisional and i'm saying toronto new york toronto go through i back us to go through even with rittich um if we weren't in it if i wasn't managing montreal i'd probably pick boston there to be fair and boston toronto would be an absolute battle probably back boston but in a, if we're in that spot i back us Colorado then would face either Boston or Montreal. Um, and yeah, I, I, I honestly, if Boston and Colorado are there, Boston might have the goalie to shut down Colorado. 
and that would be a very interesting matchup indeed. I don't think we have that team. I don't think we have that goalie. It's going to be rough. We need to find our, our best players. So let me know on those what you think we should do. Like I say, Dylan Larkin, Ben Bishop. I'm thinking about, but I really don't know how well they'd fit and if we need to make those moves or not. Uh, Bishop, you know, that would be predicted on getting rid of Primo. While his value is super high, and I don't think he's as good as he's playing right now. So do we sell high? And start working to get that sort of succession in place when Askarov will take over. Do we go after a young player in the uh, in free agency if they're there? And then the big one for me is, do you agree that Vince Dunn is probably someone we need on this team? Someone that really helps out the back end. And if Bishop is an improvement over Primo and Dunn comes in and and is an improvement on someone else, or is a replacement for Giordano for the next three years. That means we're so much better defensively. Until our young players on the back end, Askarov, Struble, um, who else we got back there that we really want to see do well? I'd say players like um, uh, Oktyuk, Cleven, I almost thought Cleven, to me, still might all come up this year as well. But yeah. Struble, young guy. Broberg, Rasmus Darling to grow into his role. Noah Dobson, if he can add defensive mindedness to his offensive power. It's going to be interesting. I think that's my thing. It's going to be interesting to see how we rebuild. But let me know those. Comment section below. Like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You know the drill. If you are not subscribed, and many of you aren't, please do consider doing so. You'll get all these comments uh, and content put into your inbox where you'll be notified of them by YouTube. Hopefully, they're not doing a good job of that right now, though. But yeah, um, yeah, I'm optimistic, but I don't think we're as good as last year, and I don't think we should expect to get to the Stanley Cup final, whereas last year I think we, we could have. Um, but we've, we've dialed it back a little bit. We're in a retool rather than a rebuild. But we still have very, very good draft picks. And we still have a plan to maybe go ahead. Right now, I still think we're probably number two in the league in terms of raw talent. Us and Colorado, definitely. Um, we're not getting too much unpaid production. You know, Primo's probably the only guy there. And again, I think that's false. I do think he's a three-and-a-half to four-star player. I think that's where he is. He's a touch high right now, which is why I see the value in possibly trading him. I do think we're paying for, you know, players here back from a style that really don't work. Um, and like I say, overall, when we get rid of Backstrom and Stahl, maybe get rid of Giordano, because he is 39, we wouldn't have a 30-year-old or above on the roster. Next season, Johnny Goudreau, Lindholm, they might jump there, but we wouldn't have a veteran on the team. So let me know your feelings on that. Get back to me. I'll see you soon. Thanks very much for watching and the continued support as always. Until then, folks, take care. I'll see you soon.